Season 2, Episode 2, Ride the Lightning. We're doing this. Written by James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich, Cliff Burton, and Dave Mustaine, Ride the Lightning is the second song off the album Ride the Lightning and the title track of the album. So on the previous episode for Fight Fire with Fire, I talked about how in order to understand why Jason Newstead's bass parts were turned down on Injustice for All and why that wasn't so unusual, one first had to understand what was going on between Cliff Burton and engineer Fleming Rasmussen and James and Lars. First, the drums. Now it's no secret Lars has always struggled to record his drum tracks in the studio uh, and a lot of drummers can get through their drum tracks in a single take. In Lars's defense, his drum tracks are not like a lot of other drummers. He has very imaginative and elaborate drum fills that are really difficult to land in a single take. In order to capture the drum performance Lars had envisioned in his mind, he would record multiple takes of the same song and stitch them together on reel to reel with the engineer after the fact. Second, and this is no secret either, all the rhythm guitars that you hear on the first five Metallica albums in the left and right speaker, all James Hetfield. And Fleming would go on to say in interviews that James was very diligent when working in the studios and would record multiple overdubs of his rhythm guitar tracks that would all sound like one guitar. Third, the bass tracks. When it came time to record them, Cliff would come into the studio and, well, I'll just let them say it. I can remember you complaining about him though because yeah. he'd come into at the top of the session He'd have one hand a beer, another hand a pipe, <laughs> yeah. drink a beer, smoke, yeah. and he'd go, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm I, loose now. <laughs> All right, we don't want you to lose. We want it tight, goddammit. So you have these three perfectionists in Fleming, James, and Lars, and then Cliff wants to come in and kind of wing it. And one could understand where he's coming from, the passion, the vibe, to be in the moment. And one could also understand where they're coming from, which is studio time is money, and we want to record the best performances we can. Lastly, kids, this is my automation lane. I used it uh, for multiple reasons. One, I wanted to bring out parts of the bass track that I thought didn't quite come through because Cliff probably recorded with new strings. And when you do that, you get all the low frequency at the lower end of the fretboard. But when you go to the higher parts of the fretboard, you lose a little bit of volume. Two, uh, Cliff played with his fingers. Uh, and so in the beginning of the song right here, where he's slapping uh, the string essentially, He's not going to have as much volume, if I turn the automation lane off, at that same minus 4 dB over here where he's playing really, really fast. So I was able to bring him up in parts where he would be buried in the mix. And three, I also used it to keep the rest of the bass track quieter so when we get to a song like Escape, which has no isolated bass track, you won't miss the bass. And now let's bring that final element of the perfect storm to light. We're going to turn off the automation lane and make an assumption that Cliff was given a volume in this song based off what he plays in the main riff. Low frequency, low on the fretboard, new strings, really able to dig in. That's the volume they gave him. Okay, let's take it over to here where he's playing as fast as he can with his two finger style. Bless his heart, I've tried to play these songs. He's playing as fast as possible. He's a little bit lost in the mix. You can't quite hear him as much. If you play with a pick, your sound is consistent from beginning to end, but uh, depending on whether you play fast or slow, when you play with your fingers, the faster you play, the less volume, the less attack you have. So I would argue that if they would have had the ability to automate Cliff when they recorded Ride the Lightning, you would have had a lot more Cliff on the album. Before we go any further, it would not be fair if I didn't mention Cliff the Lightning. The first time I heard this, it blew my mind. It's uh, essentially the six songs that were available as isolated tracks from Guitar Hero, remixed to the Cliff is nice and loud. It's got over a quarter million views, and for a reason, it's awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, you might want to check it out. And before we dive into the bass track, I want to say, in my opinion, this song is the most Ride the Lightning song on the Ride the Lightning album. And obviously they share the same title, it is the title track for a reason. Um, but conceptually, performance-wise, this song does everything they were able to do at that time and encapsulates the whole album in a single song. Also, in my opinion, this song features the drum track of the album from Lars Ulrich, phenomenal drum performance, and the guitar solo of the album from Kirk Hammett. And many people say, for them, that the guitar solo is the crowning jewel of this amazing song. So I'm not going to get into it here, but I did a whole other video called The Making of Riot the Lightning Remastered, which shows that this is 295 pieces, it's 294 splits, 295 pieces to move around 
It became like leaves on water, where if you moved one piece, the pieces next to it seemed out of time. So, uh, if you're interested, there's a whole other video. I'm not going to get into it on this one because it's just too much Cliff Burton awesomeness to talk about. All right, now to check out some of the cool stuff Cliff did on this song. Some of it made it onto the album, some of it didn't, but that's where I come in. Cliff does a slide here to go along with James's rhythm guitars. Check it out. And it sounds like this. So it's, it's pretty uniform. But before the slide, Cliff is only slapping the open E string. Hear that now he's slapping the seventh fret of the A string and the ninth fret of the D string, forming an octave E chord. Pretty cool. This section right here, I automated it up and it sounds like this. You notice this one note right here? It's actually a half decibel quiet than the rest of the song. I actually automated it the other way because it's loud. If I turn the automation lane off, we'll just listen to it at this volume. You can't really tell, but if I put it here, and let's just say, let's just hear it. You hear how it just jumps out like that? It's, it's, and now this is what it sounds like on your remaster. So even there, it's kind of loud, but just, let's, one last time. So yeah, I, uh, I automated that down so that it sounds like that note isn't just jumping off the album at you. Even even a half decibel below the normal volume, it's still kind of loud. James has a pretty strict, all down picked, palm muted eighth note thing going on in this song, and Cliff deviates from it quite frequently. I'm going to just show you some of his quirky individual Cliff fills. So over here, I'm going to show you how his new strings work against him. I'll turn the automation lane off and let you hear it. Let's hear it. Now let's hear it with the automation lane on. He does triplets here, and it's against James and Lars doing eighth notes on the downbeat, lockstep, and he's doing triplets the other way. So check, check this out. I, I boosted it quite a bit. You can't really hear it on the album, and as an isolated track, it sounds normal for Cliff. But against James and Lars playing downbeats, it sounds like this. And as I said, it won't be on your remaster. It's not on the album. I've listened. He does it again here, too. Over here, you'll see the same two patterns for the second chorus. And then we start at the bridge. A minute 46.47 drove me absolutely nuts. Um, I would always make a list when I listened to the song in my car of all the times that the bass was off and then bring it back into the house and I'd fix them all and then I'd take it back out into the car and I'd find a whole new list. 146.47 was always on that list and I couldn't figure out why. But I'm going to actually turn the automation lane off with the bass loud so that you can hear what I'm talking about. The bass sounds out of time there. And there's a reason for that. No matter where I lined it up, the bass was out of time. Can you guess, kids? Well, I'm going to play just your remaster. You'll be able to hear it instantly. Right there. The rhythm guitars go slightly out of time. The left channel rhythm guitar and the right channel rhythm guitar, they drift apart for just a half a second. So no matter where you line up the bass part, it's wrong. Let's hear it again. So what I had to do to combat that was to automate that F-sharp note. Mm -hmm. 
down. If you ever attempted to play this with your right hand, the way Cliff does with just two fingers, uh, you'll notice a lactic acid buildup that happens on the top of your hand. Uh, just It's called, I guess, ache or something, pain, but it's, uh, it's from the constant endurance required to play this. Right there, he is lockstep with James on those steady eighth notes. Um, but on the F and the G, he takes a little rest and he, he kind of like pumps the blood out of his hand. He flushes it out by taking these these heavier notes by just basically like swatting the blood out. I don't know, but check this out. He basically does notes that really don't make sense with the rhythm guitar part to facilitate his own needs. And then he goes right back to it. But this part right here, I actually thought was fake the first time I heard it. Uh-huh. That's on the album? I didn't know that the first time I heard it. That's on the album too? Yeah, the first time I heard this I thought, that's a fake. But I did a little more research and it is Cliff without a doubt and it is on the album just barely. Let's take a listen. Mixed criminally quiet. Let's listen for that skate ramp fill, it's coming up. Sure, it's on the album, why not? Now it's time once again for the in-album lifeline segment brought to you as always by fresh produce no not the brand the concept eat your fruits and veggies in this segment i always ask the question what i trade if the song that i'm working on has an isolated bass track would i trade it away for a song that doesn't and if the song doesn't have an isolated bass track would i trade for one that does and in the case of ride the lightning the album six of the eight songs have isolated bass tracks the two that don't are escape and the call of cthulhu and given the fact that escape was the song they added to the album at the last minute when they needed one more song and the fact that you can kind of still hear the bass solo on the Call of Cthulhu and all that we've heard on the Ride the Lending isolated bass track, I would say that I would not trade this isolated bass track away for either of those two songs. Now I will now just sing. Sing. That took a really long time. Shouldn't have waited so long to get started on that song. The rest of the songs on Ride the Lightning are done, and everything except for Orion is done on Master Puppets. So content should keep coming for a good long while. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. This is the Metallica Remastered series. Stay tuned for more. the brand the concept eat your fruits and veggies in this question I, oh, <laughs> huh.